American flag when, when we do that, okay? Hey. I know you're kind of complicated, huh? It's really <laughs> challenging on Friday at the end. All right. You may turn it on. Yes, sir. You've been recording all that? Great. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the 11th of uh, January. This is actually going to be week two, Monday. And uh, Cadet Haslam, you have the, you have the flight. Flight! Hut and hut! I'm in one, report. I'm in two, report. All present in the with the exception of Petrovich and Brunelser. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Seats. Alrighty, welcome to week two. For those of you online, I am here in my morale uniform, my teachers. This is I'm going to actually record this on Friday because next Tuesday we will be at Luke Air Force Base for a CIA trip. Uh, so I'm not going to be here, so I'm recording this ahead of time. Uh, we're actually, uh, we had a conversation yesterday regarding uh, the first flight and how they did it and where they did it. And I think it was, was it Kramer that said something about a uh, uh, French claim about a first flight. And I went and looked it up on our friend Wikipedia, and they actually had it. Uh, here in 1890, uh, I'm highlighting it, uh, on this actual vehicle right here, said he made the first manned, powered, heavier than our air flight of a significant di distance, 50 meters, 150 feet, and insignificant altitude from level ground. Level ground in his bat wing, uh, self-propelled aircraft. It had a single tractor propeller. It lifted off the ground and then did what? Crashed. Everybody crashes, yes. It was not publicized so many years later, but there are some uh, claims on this. Otto Lilienthal. Has anybody ever heard of Otto Lilienthal? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who was that dude? He was a German glider pilot. Page 23 on the right side had his glider. He reminds me of Thomas he really tried hard. There's a picture of him right there, actually, uh, jumping off of a, uh, a sand dune or a cliff. Ollie Lindenthal really did work hard to fly. He's from Germany. Uh, look, uh, Flight Hill near Berlin, Germany. Uh, there is some background story on here. Uh, is the, re the reality is he made, what, 2,000 glides prior to his death. When he died from glidering, glidering, yes. <laughs> yeah. um, he did this in 1894, which is a full decade prior to the Wright brothers. And actually, there is, I remember reading, I went to Ohio to Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. And they took a lot of Lilienthal's numbers and tried to repl replicate his design of his gliders and used a, a uh, air tunnel, basically a wind tunnel. And the bottom line was Lilienthal made a mathematical error that he never caught, but only the Wright brothers caught. And guess what? Everybody else who followed him tried to replicate Lilienthal's uh, experiments. And what did they do? Crashed. Crashed and burned. <laughs> and uh, poor, uh, poor Lilienthal died. But he definitely furthered the uh, flying world. And actually, right here, we actually have him in our, our book. And uh, we honor him with the father of modern aviation. He enveloped a powered biplane, which is, you know, two wings put above each other. And uh, right before he flew, flew the biplane, he tried to fly his glider one last time, 
He stalled from 50 feet, dropped like a rock, and was killed. 2,000 flights, that's a lot. I don't think that Wright Brothers ever did 200 flights. I mean, that, that's a lot of flying. But his, his numbers were wrong. The Wright Brothers proved that, and they figured it out, and that was kind of one of their innovations is actually going from that. Uh, the next person I want to talk to you about is uh, not Stringfellow, but the plane is called Samuel Langley. Hmm. Who ever heard of this guy? What did he do? Samuel Langley. Hmm. He's one of the first Americans to try to build a fire plane with a motor. Yes, sir. That's what I was going to say. There you go. That's it. But how did he get money? Yes, sir. The U.S. government. U.S. government. You better believe it. And actually, he was involved with the Smithsonian Institute. So he's quite tied into the Washington, D.C. money side. He started air experiment in 1885. 1885. Is that before or after the Wright brothers? Uh, before. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. Before. And the U.S. government actually gave him money to make it happen. He had some friends in high places. Yeah, friends in high places. Yay! So we honor him as the person who had the first flight, right? No. What happened to him? Crash and burn. Crash and burn. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, the actuality is, yes, he crashed and burned. And you can see a picture of it there on page 24. Prepares to take off from a launch tra track. And actually, he did it over the water. So guess what? People drowned. Not him. But uh, they absolutely did, uh, did not do well. He, de he donated his plane to the Smithsonian Institute right after it fell into the river. Blah, 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 fell in the river. So, the impact of this gentleman, first of all, it happened in Virginia, and about, what, five miles from where his actual experiments took place. What did they do for him? They built a statue. No, nope, they didn't build a statue. They built an Air Force base. They named it Langley Air Force Base, which is in Norfolk, Virginia. And it is where it's a fighter base. It's where all the fighters and the test, uh, some of the test, NASA test facilities are there. So they built a base for him. And he was a loser. He crashed and burned. <laughs> Just kidding. L for Langley. All right, so uh, yes. Um, as you can see, uh, they specifically, uh, in retrospect, said that he wanted to power his aircraft with bigger engines, but they didn't know how to control it. He did not figure out the way to control an aircraft like we have talked about with the Wright brothers. And there's F-15s. Let's see, that's an F-15 and F-22 right next to Langley Air Force Base. I've flown it out there quite a few times, and uh, it's named after him. So, that pretty much fall, uh, finishes our lesson two in, uh, in chapter one. And we're going to go straight down into the developing aircraft, which is a chapter uh, should, we, should we cover the right buzz? We went over the right buzz, uh, what, three months ago. Uh, oh, well, well, let's talk about, let's talk about the, uh, the flight that we were, talk, we were showing. The initial flights uh, that came through. Here's on Wikipedia. Uh, and we went through, there's the picture of the Wright brothers. What was their innovation to break through and control the direction of the aircraft? What was that called? A fin. Excuse a fin. me? Put their fin on the back. A fin or rudder, that's what you see there on the back. What else? The rudders and uh, elevators maybe? Rudders and elevators. Elevators make them go left, up and down. Rudders go yaw. Okay. But then how do you turn left and right? Yes, sir. Didn't the Wright brothers like twist the wings? Ding, 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 ding. Wing warping is what they called it. And don't you remember I showed you that they were bicycle mechanics. And bikes were really cool. That was like the ultimate car. And he was sitting there holding a bicycle tube, tire tube box. It was square. And he was just playing with it when he was selling it. And he looked at it and goes, you know what? If I turn the wings like this, it will turn. And if I turn the wings like this, they will turn. It's called wing warping. And that's exactly what that picture is there I have on the screen for you. Because right here on the right 
he has a shuttle and he leans to the right and guess what? It warps and it goes to the right. And he wants to level it off, he pushes himself to the left and he leans to the left and it levels off. The rudder, which is typically in the back of the aircraft, where is it in this aircraft? The front, sir. See this thing down here, in the front, way up here in the front? That's, that's the elevator, it makes it go up and down, and here's the rudder in the back. But I'm telling you, that was the innovations that they did. That was, that was, a, that was, a, that was what made them different from everybody else. Uh, so here's Orwell and Wilbur, right here, three axis system in, de in completed development, completed development of the three axis control system. Uh, and their uh, glider was the basis for their patented control system, still used on modern fixed wing aircraft. Three controls, three directions. So that was their, their big innovation. Um, and then, of course, right here is the actual famous picture of it taking off of the skid, right, at uh, Kitty Hawk. Kitty Hawk, and you can actually see. Previously, we were in a glider, but now he has a he has a actual engine in there, right? And the big, huge propellers pushing it. Okay, it was a push me plane. He had the elevators in the front, and the rudders here on the back. He still warped it by moving his body, and you can see that if you go to uh, the Smithsonian, for instance. But uh, that was heavier than air, engine-driven control flight. Uh, how long did the first flight last? 13 minutes. 13 minutes? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Ah, thank you very much. Try somebody again. Yes. 12 seconds. Nope. 59 seconds. Okay. Today's first flight. Like a lot. Uh, well, it says that actually the day's fourth flight it flew 59 seconds. Um, the first flight, you're right. You know what? I think you're all right. I'm sorry. Each of the first flights was 120, 120 feet is less than the length of a space shuttle. So the first flight was controlled, but it didn't go that far. What happened at the end of the first day? It crashed. It crashed, and they had to actually fix it up. Okay. Do you think it was very chilly out there in December in North okay. Carolina on the beach? Yeah. Worse than Prescott. Okay. I mean, the wind's 30 miles an hour. You've got to be kidding me. They, uh, they did suck it up and uh, do quite well. Okay. Well, that ends uh, the first uh, chapter. And uh, now I'm going to review the Wright Brothers. Let's go into the second chapter, second lesson. Well, actually, I'll tell you what, when we, uh, when, we, when, we did, when we did this before, we did not talk about how much did the Army love the Wright Brothers? A lot. They love the Wright brothers, right? No, not much, sir. Not much. Okay, we just talked about this actually. Why would the army not love the Wright brothers? Because they were making them, they were making advances that the army wasn't. Well, Army Air Corps cares about horses, right? Why? They did not see the practicality of having an aircraft in war. True. They didn't even know what an aircraft was, right? But what, what else? They didn't want to spend their money on them. Or make an airplane. Very good, very good. Why did they want to spend money on these guys? They, didn't like they believed it would fail. But why? Because they've never seen it. Because they're bicycle shop owners. Exactly. Well, I mean, you think about bicycle shop. Well, guess what? Today, a bicycle is low tech. Back then, bicycle was pretty high tech. But I'm saying, what had they just invested in that failed miserably and ended up in the drink and the, the river and the... Uh, yeah, Langley. Old man Langley, who was very well connected in Army in uh, D.C., got everybody to invest in his world. And guess what? He failed miserably. And so uh, the people didn't want... How could a person from Ohio, a bike repairman, uneducated... I mean, what kind... Do they have a doctorate degree in aeronautical engineering? They're uneducated in their mind, but Langley failed. He crashed and burned a river. And so, uh, so what happened was that the, the, the actual, the actual uh, airplane that the Wright brothers built, they wanted to sell it to the Army, but the bottom line was their offer was turned down. They did not want to buy it. They didn't think it would be worth it. 
This is, what, January 1905, they went straight to the army to try to sell this to the government. But what, 10 years, nine years earlier, Samuel Adam, Samuel Landley got $30,000, $50,000, and failed. So that was not good. And so when they failed for one person, what did they do then? If you fail selling it, selling it to the American government, what might you want to do? Sell it to another there government. There you go. Go sell it to another government. And they went straight to the Brits and the French. And, uh, and they tried to, you know, interest the other governments. They were very interested. But, of course, it was like playing off uh, one person on another, making them jealous. And finally, uh, finally, the government came around. And once they patented it, that's the original patent for the, uh, for the flight, they came through and uh, the bid, they said a request for bid. Whenever you have trying to buy something new, if I'm the government, I would say, Right, brothers, you need to build a plane to carry two people. You need to go 40 miles an hour. And you need to be able to fly 120 miles. I'm pretty sure that was close to what it was. And so guess what? They did it. They, they completed it all. And you can see on top of page 41, it said the government, if the government uh, hadn't already invested $50,000 in Samuel Langley's flight experiments, they didn't want to spend any more money.